Hi everyone, this is Aaron again and today I'm going to teach you to play Königwolfen. Uh, after I put up the first video on French Tarot, uh, I had quite a few um, requests to do a how to play Königwolfen video because there's quite a few people out there playing this one, but at the moment there's actually, as far as I can tell, there's no other tutorials for it on YouTube, at least not in English, there might be some in German. Um, this is a game played, or it was originally mainly played in Austria, particularly in the city of Vienna. Um, and it's closely related to the other games played around Austria and uh, Hungary, Slovenia, Czech Republic, uh, places like that. But uh, this is the one that I think recently, this is the one I've been having the most fun playing. As described here on PugArt.com, a fast and friendly game for four or five players, which can be a lot of fun, even if played quite badly. Also in Austria, it's got quite a bit of cultural history. It was, uh, uh, it was the favorite game of Sigmund Freud, for example. Uh, he always seems to come up whenever any people, anyone talks about Königwolfen. Um, there's a picture of him saying, and by the way, this is a legit game because Sigmund Freud played. First of all, you need a, uh, I forget which side it is, but there'll be a button to have a look at the deck that you play this game with. Uh, you use a 54 card Central European Tarok deck, for example, the Industrie und Glück deck. Um, that's the nickname they give to the one they usually use. Um, yeah, so let's jump in and have a look at a game. Today I'm going to use two different online places you can play to demonstrate the game. The first one is here, onlinecardgames.co.uk, which was made by Joe Ellison. And if you look over on the right hand side, that's actually Joe himself who is playing in this game that I was taking part in. So thank you Joe for letting me use footage from your site. Now if you just walked up to a table not knowing what's going on, it looks like a pretty normal trick taking game. Someone leads a card, whatever suit that card is, everyone else has to follow suit and play the same suit if they can. If they can't, as Joe couldn't, uh, you can play a trump card, which are the ones there which have the uh, Roman numerals on them, and the trump cards will beat any of the suit cards, otherwise the highest card in the, tri in the trick wins. If uh, you lead hearts to the trick and everyone plays hearts, Joe on the right there has played the king of hearts, he wins that trick, he gets to take those four cards, put them in his pile, he just let a heart. Queen of Spades cannot beat it. Oh, but I played the Queen of Hearts. That is the highest card in that trick. So I will gather up those four cards. That's me at the bottom, R&R. &R. Now I played a Trump, so Trumps are a suit of their own, so you have to follow if you can. Joe played the 21, so he won. Now he uh, played the, the Knight of Hearts there. I threw a Trump on, so I won that. And then I have played that card there that looks like the Fool from a Tarot deck, which actually that's because it is in these games is the highest trump card. So instead of being l'excuse as it is in French, which excuses you from having to follow suit, in this game it is simply the highest card that you can play. Okay, so like most games in the Tarot Tarok family, this is a point trick game. So it's not about how many tricks you win, it's how many points there are in the cards that you win in those tricks. So every time some of, one of us won a trick, we gathered up those cards, we put them in our pile. So once all the tricks have been played and no one has any cards left in their hand, we now add up the points that we have. Like in most tarot card games, the one of trumps, the 21 of trumps, and the fool are special cards that are worth more points than almost anything else in the game. The group of three are called in German the Tull, which is actually from the French tous les trois, which means all three. The One of Trumps has the nickname the Pagat. The 21 of Trumps has the nickname Der Mont, which is German for the moon. It's because of a mistranslation of the French word Le Monde, which was trump card 21 in most traditional tarot decks. And then they call the fool the Scuse, which is from the French word L'Excuse, even though it's actually used differently to how it is in French Tarot. The three Trull cards are all worth five points. Kings are also worth five points. Queens are worth four points. Knights are worth three points, and Jacks are worth two points. All other cards are worth one point each. This is another thing that happens in a lot of tarot games, and it's a bit weird if you're not used to it, but you count the cards in groups of three, you add up how many points those three cards are worth, and then you deduct two. I might explain the history of why that is later, but for the moment, that's just what it is. If you've got one left over, you deduct two thirds from its value. If there's two left over, you deduct uh, one and a third from its value. Through the magic of mathematics, it doesn't matter how you count them, as long as you count them in groups of three and deduct two from each total of those groups of three and keep going, you end up with the same score. It's all good. Uh, the deck contains, therefore, 70 points worth of cards. You need a minimum of 35 and two-thirds of a point to win, so very slightly more than a simple majority. 
Okay, so far so good. This is a trick-taking game. You want to win lots of tricks that have high-scoring cards in them, so kings are worth a lot. The three trill cards are worth a lot. The queens, the knights, and the jacks are also worth a bit, not as much as the first groups, but still worth plenty. So in the game you were just watching before, Joe only managed to get 29 and two-thirds of a point in his cards. So he does not have enough to win the game. He does not have a majority of the points. He has to pay the other three of us a penalty of eight victory points to each of us. But how'd he end up being the declarer in the first place anyway? To better describe how someone ends up being the declarer, let's start from the start and actually deal out a fresh hand. You get the deck out, you deal. Uh, you deal six cards to each player, going anti-clockwise around the table from the dealer. So after you've dealt everyone six cards each, you put six cards in the middle of the table. These are gonna be called the Talon, and uh, we'll see in a second what you do with them. Then you deal another six cards to each player. And then we have a bidding round. This part looks a little bit scary because you've got a massive menu of things that you can bid in this game and someone will have to win the bidding to become the taker and basically play on their own against the other three or secretly pick one of the other three to be their partner. Whilst there's a really long list of things you can bid, most of them can be boiled down to a couple of things, uh, which you just need to know a little bit of German vocab. First thing is Rufer, which means you're bidding to call one of the other players kings to be your partner. Rufer is just German for the caller. The next word you need to know is Dreier, which means you want to play on your own against the other three. Okay, now remember when I explained how you dealt, you put six cards in the middle of the table. These six cards are called the Talon, and for most of the bids, uh, before you start the actual round, you get to turn over those six cards, and they're divided into the top three and the bottom three. You flip them over, and everyone can see what these cards are, and whoever won the bid uh, gets to pick either this group of three or that group of three, put them in their hand, and then throw out three cards that they don't want. Um, unless they've bid a Zorlor contract. So then there's something called a Zorlor, which means you are going to play without picking up any of the cards from the Talon. And finally, there's the word Farben, which is German for colours or also means suits. And basically, this means you're playing a suit game in which the trumps don't work. They don't trump any of the other suits. Okay, so for example, there's a bid called the Zorlorufer. So Zorlo, meaning they're not going to pick up any of the Talon cards. In fact, they won't even get to look at the Talon cards. And it's a Rufa, meaning that they're going to call one of the other uh, players to be their partner by saying, I want to play with whichever king. So you play a Zorlo Rufa, you don't look at those six Talon cards. You say, I want to play with the King of Hearts, let's say. Whoever holds the King of Hearts becomes your partner. There's also a couple of other games that you can um, try to play, which are called Negativspieler. Basically, these are ones where you're trying to play to lose. The first is called a Bettler, which means beggar in German, where you aim to win no tricks whatsoever. There's also one called a Piccolo, where you are trying to win exactly one trick, but only one trick. A Zwickolo, where you're aiming to win only two tricks, no more, no less. Uh, and with these, these can be played ouvert which is French for open. Basically, that means everyone has to play with their cards down on the table so you can see what everyone else is doing. Or semi-ouvert, where whoever the person is who is playing Bettler or whatever has to put their cards down. So looking at the game we were playing before, you can see in that black box there, sort of middle left, this really long list of things that you can bid. So most of the things that we just talked about there are listed. There's a whole bunch of other various little things that I'll explain in a second though. And basically, as the bidding goes around, someone has to bid something higher than what the previous person did, like an auction. As soon as you're passed, you're out. Then basically, whoever bids the highest thing gets to be the taker. So using this table as an example, old mate at the bottom is the dealer. That means Clara, the woman with the blonde hair on the right there, is forehand. She gets to start the bidding and she says mein Spiel, which basically means she's going to wait and see what the others do. Uh, Horace at the top bids says Weiter, which basically means he's going to pass. And Leo at left bids Zola Rufa. Zola Rufa is worth two points. Uh, the dealer passes and then Clara has to bid something worth more than two points if she wants to stay in. She bids Bettler, which is worth four points. Then he bids a Dreyer, which is worth five points. 
and he wins the auction because she doesn't want to bid Betel Ouvert or Betel Semi Ouvert or something to overbid him. The person sitting to the dealer's right is called the Forehand, and they've actually got a slight advantage that they can say Mein Spiel, which means I'm going to wait and see what the other three bid before I tell you what I'm going to bid and they have a couple of other options not available to the other players. For example, they're the only ones who can call a simple rufer, where you call a king and swap three cards from the Talon. They're the only person who can bid a Zexer Dreyer, which is when you play a Dreyer, so it's you against the other three, but you get all six cards from the Talon if you want them. And they're the only people who can bid Trishaken. Trishaken is basically a bid when you are punishing people who should have bid and didn't, where you play every man for him or herself, uh, trying to take as few points as possible. So in that game we were looking at before, John A at the top bid a Zexer Dreyer. He was forehand, he's got a little V for forehand next to his name. He picks up the six cards. Unusually in a Zexer Dreyer, you don't show the six cards to the other players. Every other contract where you flip the talon and put it in your hand, everyone gets to see what they are first. So everyone else passed, so he got to play that. The next thing we do is we're all going to say whether we're going to attempt any bonuses, or John himself, whether he's going to attempt any bonuses, and they have all passed around. No one did that. I'll explain later a bit more about the bonuses. Anyway, he leads the trump card 20. Christopher has to follow suit with trumps. He plays the three, I play the two. And then George, to the right there, played the Skuz and won the trick. Led Diamonds. John has played the King of Diamonds. At the moment, he's winning this trick. We all have to follow suit with Diamonds. John won that one. He puts that into his pile. He plays the Trump 14. Christopher plays the Trump 17. I play the Trump 1 because I know that Christopher has won that trick. So those cards are going to go into Christopher's pile. The one and all of its tasty, tasty points are safe away from John, because it's the three of us versus him. George has taken that trick. He's led spades. John, what's John going to do? Come on, do something. Oh, played the six. Have you got spades there, over there, Christopher? Christopher has got spades, so he has to follow suit. I'll throw another low, uh, only one point card on it because John has one there. He plays the 10 of trumps. Christopher plays the 11. I play the 12. Oh no, I don't. I play the 4. I thought about the 12. And then George has played the 16. I don't have any clubs, so I'm going to have to trump this, uh, which means I get to keep that king of clubs. And I feel like we've taken quite a lot of points. I'm not sure at this point whether we've taken enough to beat John, but anyway. Lead hearts. Whoop, king of hearts. He's going to keep that. That's some more points for John. The 21, that is the highest in play because the Scoos is already gone. So we just have to follow some trumps on that. John then leads. Ah, uh, the ace. I think he's going to take the last couple of tricks here. The knight of spades. I play the jack of spades. The 19, George had the 19, so he gathered that one in. I should have played the king. I would have had some points there. I'm going to play the king now because Christopher's got that trick. I think we might have beaten John here. Let's have a look. I haven't been counting. As it goes there, yes. Uh, John has lost uh, that game and has to pay us eight points each. Well done, team defense. So beside the victory points you get for winning that game, whatever the game was worth, there's a whole bunch more victory points that you can get through various bonuses. So the first one is Trull, which if you catch all three Trull cards in your tricks, you win a point. Vier Königer, meaning four kings. If you catch all four kings, you get a point. Mondfang, which means catching the moon. That means that you caught the opponent's 21 with the Skus, also worth a point. There's one called König Ultimo, which means that if you're playing a Rufa game and your partner was the King of Hearts, if they successfully played the King of Hearts to the last trick and you won it, then that's also worth a point. Characteristic of Königwolfen is also a set of bonuses called the birds, or in German, die Vögel, or Vogel, if you're saying it in Austrian dialect. Basically, with this set, you need to win the last trick with the one of trumps, the second last trick with the two of trumps, or the third last trick with the three of trumps, or the fourth last trick with the four of trumps, and so on. The one of trumps is the Pagat. So to win the Pagat bonus, you need to win the last trick with the one of trumps. That's worth one point. Then the two of trumps is called the Uhu, which means owl. It's a joke about the Imperial Eagle on the card. To win the Uhu bonus, you need to win the second last trick with the Uhu, with the two of trumps. 
and it's worth two points. The Three of Trumps is nicknamed the Kakadu, meaning cockatoo. So win the third last trick with the Three of Trumps, you get three extra victory points. The Four of Trumps is nicknamed Kvapil. That's not a kind of bird, it's a family name in Austria. But you get the picture, you win the fourth last trick with the Fourth of Trumps, you'll get four bonus points. Some people even play that you can do it with the Five of Trumps, in which case it's nicknamed either Tronte, which means the dodo, or Gaia, which means the vulture and it would net you five points. That is getting pretty hard to do. There's also bonuses for achieving a Zack, which actually it depends who you're playing with. The exact amount varies to win Zack. Um, usually when I've played it, it's that you have to win at least 46 points in your tricks. Then there's also a bonus called Valat, which means you have won every single trick. Doesn't happen often, but it happens more in Königwolfen than it does in French Tarot. Spoiler alert, uh, if you stick around to the end of the video, you'll hear a little bit more about what happens when you win a Valat. All of these bonuses can actually be worth more if you announce beforehand that you are confident they're going to happen. If you don't announce them, and they happen anyway, German you call this still, which means silent. Then there's the word angesagt, which is German for announced. Any of the bonuses which you pre-announced will be worth double what they were if they were silent. On the flip side though, the defenders, if they're pretty sure that they can stop you achieving this bonus, they can announce Contra, which also doubles the value. Contra is the defender's way of saying, there's no way he's going to achieve this Troll or Fierkerniger or whatever bonus he's shooting for. And if he fails, if you are right, that will net you as defenders a lot more victory points. However, you've got to be pretty careful with this because if he succeeds, then he's going to get double the victory points. Finally, there's a bonus for achieving a Valat. Usually it multiplies the game value by 4, or by 8 if you pre-announce I'm going to get every single trick. Some people also play that it multiplies all the bonuses by 4, but that's not necessarily a standard rule. Okay, so I've done way too much talking. I think the best thing to do now is I'm just going to play through a couple of hands, this time on a website called tarok.zakzak.at for Austria. This is a really great site. Um, which what I like about this one is it's a great place to practice because it's got an AI and you can just play for free against the robots doesn't matter how bad you mess up okay I don't like the look of my cards so I'm gonna click weiter which means pass the next person also passed then the guy at the top bit a dreier meaning he wants to play on his own against the other three of us we all said gut he also announced a bonus that he's going to get the troll he's going to win all three tool cards and he just played the Pagat in that first trick, which means he gets to keep it because no one else had a trump in that trick. Suggests to me that he definitely has the 21 and the Scoos, the 22. So let's see how we go there. Oh, he's taken another one. So he played the 8. We took that one at least because I had the 15. We've got the King of Spades there. That's a few points to the defenders, but... So far, I have a bad feeling about this. Uh, he's taken quite a few points. He played the 21 there, and in the next trick played the Scoos, so he takes both of them. No one has any spades left at the end. He took two kings and a queen. He has taken just over 50 card points in this hand, meaning he has comfortably won. And he was successful in taking the Trull bonus, which he announced beforehand, so it's worth twice as much. And he got over 45 points, which means he's also achieved the Zuck bonus. He got it silent because he didn't announce it beforehand, but that's also worth another point. Adding that up, it's four points for a successful dryer, two points for a announced Trull, and one point for a still Zuck. That means seven points. Each of the three of us has to pay him seven. He gets 21 victory points out of that hand. This next hand looks a bit better for me though. I've got the skews, I've got the 19, I've got the 18, 15, so I've got quite a few good Taroks there. I'm going to bid a Zola Wolfer, I reckon. So I bid a Zola Wolfer. Now I need to pick a king who'd be a good partner. I won't bid the. No, I won't pick the King of Spades because I'm always scared the King of Spades will win. Ah, oh, damn it, I did. Superstition. King of Spades is always in the talon. Anyway, person to the left is definitely not my partner because they didn't follow suit with spades, so they don't have it. Ah, what do I do? 
Mm. That's good. Let's just play from the top down. So pulled out. Oof. That guy to the left just took the king of hearts. King of clubs. I'm hoping the person on the right's my partner. Took that trick. Now I'm just going to play it out from the top. Hopefully they won't have enough Torox left. And I'll be able to pull in points at the end. I've got two kings in the last trick there. So we went all right. We got just over 40 card points, so we won the game. Uh, Zola Rufa is worth two victory points. And because the king that I called to be my partner, the king of spades, was played in the last trick, that's a Koenig Ultimo bonus. So I got an extra point for that. So uh, the person on the right, who was my partner, and I, we both got three victory points paid to us by the uh, two people who lost in defense. This next hand, yeah, that's not enough to bid on. I'm just going to pass. The guy at the top, though, has bid a Zorla Wolfer with the King of Diamonds, which that's me. So secretly there, I'm the partner of the person at the top. I could bid, I could announce a Koenig Ultimo as a bonus to try and get more points. But I won't. I'm just going to play it safe. Lead out the Queen of Clubs, and then my partner has played the King of Clubs, so that's some points for us. Now the top led the diamond, hoping that someone would pop out the king, but it got trumped, so I just kept that king of diamonds safe in my hand, where I can play it later. Okay, my partner has that trick, so I'll throw some extra points on it there. I have to play trump, because I can't follow suit on hearts. Mm, I can't follow suit on this either. I'm going to play a trump to win that one. What do I lead now? Lead the scoos and pull out a few more trumps. There we go, did that. Play the trump 14, see what happens. Yes, we won that, and we got the pagat. That means I think we've got a trull bonus. Let me check. Oh, I have to follow suit there. And the last one, I played the king to the last trick and got a Koenig Ultimo bonus. So there, we did pretty well out of this. So the Zorla Wolfer is worth two points on its own, plus we got the trull bonus, we got the Fear Koeniger bonus, we got the Koenig Ultimo bonus, and we also got a Zack. All of those were silent, so they were just one point each, but still adds up to six victory points that my partner at the top and I both received there. This next hand, well, that looks pretty good again. I've got a whole bunch of Torox, including the one and the 21, and I've got a king of clubs there. Jeez, I could have a crack at a tire. Could also be this one. This is called a Besser Wolfer. This is a Wolfer, uh, so you call a king because it's a Wolfer, but I get to look at the Talon and oh my god, look at that right hand side Talon. That was the, the 20 and the Skews in there and another high Tarok. That has given me a very solid hand. I should have bit a Trier if I had known that's what was in the Talon. So now look at this. I have got 11 Taroks and a king. So definitely, when you bid a Besser Wolfer, one of the things with that, because it outbids a Zola Wolfer, you have to announce at least one of the birds. Now, I'm going to announce the Pagat. I'm going to announce the Kakadu, because I'm pretty sure I can win both of them. I'm going to announce Zack, and I'm nearly thinking I could announce Valat, but I won't. But, geez, I think I'm pretty safe I'm going to win all of these. Let's see what happens. I'm just going to start at the top and just vacuum all of the Taroks out of the opponents, knowing that one of them is actually my partner, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to win all these tricks on my own. There we go, they've got no Tarox left, so I can play that king knowing it will not be trumped. I'm just going to go straight down from the top. Well, play the 12, play the 10, then I'm going to play the 3, so win the third last trick with the 3 of trumps, that's a kakadu bonus, and win the last trick with the 1 of trumps, and the Koenig Ultimo is in there as well. That is a lot of points. So a Besser Wolfer is worth one victory point, but the Pagat announced is worth two, the Kakadu is worth three, and then announced makes it six, and I got a Koenig Ultimo still, which is an extra point. All of those bonuses add up to nine, uh, plus the game is 10. I got Valat, so you multiply all of that by four, and you get 40 victory points. So that's Koenig Wolfen. There's a lot to this game, as you can tell. This is not a simple one, but 
It's one that if you play it enough, you'll work out soon enough what's going on. The next step is then learning how to play it well, um, which takes quite a bit. I'm going to do a couple of videos with people who can play it a lot better than I can. Um, particularly, I'm going to show them some, deal out some sample hands for them to tell you what they would bid, which is often um, the part that you sort of, that separates the, the experts from the beginners on that one. But in the meantime, I highly recommend grab the free phone app from TuckTuck or play it on their website for free. Play it against the AI, have a muck around, see what you can teach yourself and you will very quickly work out what's going on. And if you want to play against real people, jump on the Discord. There is a Discord traditional card games. If you look it up there, we are all very uh, keen players and you can definitely organize yourself some games with some of us on there. Okay, so we'll see you next time. Thanks.